Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 786. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Excel Magic Trick 779 to 786, click on the link below the video. Hey, how would you like to have a setup like this? Here's our chart. And five weeks of sale starting Monday, 20, June 27, 2011. And anytime you change the date here, the chart instantly update, updated. Instantly. So this is a five week chart. Put an input and everything updates, including the chart and all the formulas. I want to show you how to do this. Now, actually, I have done a video like this uh, before called Last Nine Weeks or something like this, but this is for my advanced Excel class. This is a project we were working on. So here's the date. Um, and also, the data set is already just giving us Monday. So its sales are already summarized somehow, and this is the first day of each week. And the original question that I got was this was how the data was being spit out from the system. All right, so we would like to first find the prior Monday, right? So we need a Monday here, 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 five of them based on this date. So we're going to have to build a date formula here that looks at this Wednesday and just jump back, uh, jumps back two days to Monday. No matter what day we put here, this needs to jump back to the prior Monday. We've got to look at the weekday function first. Weekday function just needs an input serial number, comma, and then you tell it, and this is awesome, new in 2010, this drop down here. If you put a 1 in, then Sunday is 1, Saturday is 7. If you put a 2 in, then Monday is 1, Sunday is 7. If you put a 3 in, Monday is 0 through Sunday is 6. And that's the one we want. We want a 3 here. Close parentheses. Let's copy this down and see what it gives us. And look at that. It gives us a 0 for Monday. That means we're on Monday. It gives us a 1 for Tuesday. That means we're one day past Monday, all the way to Sunday, which means we're six days past Monday. Well, we can combine the results of this weekday function with the day function. Now, what is day? It looks at a serial number, right? So this will just give us these, right? But really, we want a 13 here all the way down. So what do we do? We actually take this little bit. We take the day, and we subtract. So we're subtracting the weekday, right? Um, 15 minus 2 is 13. 17 minus 4 is 13. And that's whole, the whole conceptual trick here. I actually did this trick uh, just a couple of videos ago. But here's we're using it in action for a practical use. That's the concept here. Now, we come here and we build our formula. This is going to be date equals date. And we want the year, so we're going to use the year function. The year of what? Well, that. That'll give us 2011. Comma, and then we want the month of this right here. That'll give us 6, comma, and then we want the day minus the weekday. Now, the cool thing about and a couple of videos ago, I pointed this out. The cool thing about the date function is this this little thing here will, in fact, turn out to be negative sometimes. So it'll know to go to backwards into a prior uh, month, which is really perfect here. That's what makes it so dynamic. So I'm going to close parentheses, and that gives us some money. Now we can simply come here and say plus 7. Copy this down. Now, I have a little formula here today. Really, what's so cool about this is if you had today in here, you can open this on any day, and it, will sh it would show you, based on today's date, last Monday plus the, the days ahead. But really, that probably wouldn't be very, very good. This is based on past data. I just have this set up here so I can change something easily when I change it to 0. Bloop. Right? If this was a today function, then these would all be in the future, and that probably wouldn't be what we want. All right, so there we have it now. When we create our chart, I want a special label. So I'm going to do a text formula. I'm going to say week one, week two, week three. So I'm going to, in double quotes, write week space and double quote. And I need a number incrementer as I go down. So I'm going to say rows. I'm in F6. So I'm going to type a dollar sign, sorry, F dollar sign six. 
colon F6. That locks the first cell reference, but not the next one. So 6, 6, that's 1. When you go down to the next one, it'll be 6, 7, which is 2. So it'll be week 1, week 2, week 3. And another join symbol. In double quotes, I actually want this date showing here. I'm going to type comma space. So I want week 1, week 2, comma space, and the actual date. So I'm, now I'm going to end double quote another ampersand and use the text function. Text function can take this serial number or any value, comma, and our format, where you have to know custom number format. DDD, well, let's just type it out in double quotes. DDD for custom number format gives us the actual um, day as a word, three letters, comma, space, and then D slash M slash D slash one, two, three year. That will always give us this format here. Close parentheses, control enter. So that is a cool little formula that will give us a label. And this label is going to help us in our chart. It'll just uh, exp expressly say these are week one, week two, week three. Now our sales number. We're going to use basically a simple, actually, why don't I go like this just for the moment? No, that, yeah. We'll just use a uh, lookup function. Equals index. I'm going to look up, remember, I'm trying to find the sales, so I click on that cell, Control Shift Down or F4, comma, and I want the row number. Well, I already have the dates here. Here's the date column, so I can use the match function. Match lookup what? Boop, that one right there, comma, and the lookup array. Control shift down or F4. Comma. These happen to be sorted, so we could um, leave it blank for this first one, but I'm going to put an exact one. Close parentheses uh, on the index, the match, and then the index, and then that will do it. So all of this output for our chart is based on this first date. Now, part of the point of this video and what I was doing in class is just showing you that there are situations where pivot tables aren't as good as formulas. Now, this is a pretty complicated setup, but think about how dynamic it is. We just type a date in a cell, and everything changes. Now, actually, one last uh, dynamic part. Let's make a chart title. So this chart, and we're going to have a link to the, um, this date right here, equals, and then in quotes, five week chart starting or something like that and then so that's all in double quotes with an extra space there starting and then text again and we're going to look at this one right here comma and then our double quotes and whatever custom number formatting maybe I'll do d d d d comma space m slash d slash three years. Three years always gives us the full year. Close parentheses. Some some cool little thing like that. Again, if we change something here, it all updates. Now we're ready. We have our chart label and our number. I'm going to highlight one clean swoop right there. I'm going to do a bar. And let's do some fancy things to this chart. First thing is let's link this chart title to that cell. So I'm going to click on the label, make sure it's got the solid lines, not the double little uh, dash ones. Click up in the formula bar, equals, click on that cell, enter. Now it's linked. Now I'm going to right click this and uh, maybe change the on the mini toolbar. You know, this mini toolbar didn't find any good uses in Excel over the since 2007 but on the chart I like it I'm gonna change it to 12 that's looking good um, this is called chart junk so I'm gonna delete that uh, I'm gonna delete this too even though I could change the font size I'm gonna delete these lines delete keys I'm gonna click here control one change the gap maybe just a little bit so now it's a little bit wider um, and then I'm gonna come down to fill and I'm gonna say vary colors by point Click Close. I'm going to come up to Chart Tools, Layout, and maybe Data Labels. Um, I'm going to do Inside End, something like that. 
and um, we could do lots of other things with this too but let's just check this out is this working is this working so our chart the whole point was a five week chart so I'm going to type a, a zero here there it changes just totally updates absolutely awesome so that's something an example of where yes uh, absolutely you could do a pivot table something like this but perhaps not quite as uh, dynamic alright uh, we'll see you next trick